When I first got this plot, I thought it was just really overgrown, which wouldn't have taken me that long to just clear it with the brush cutter and then start getting the land into a workable condition and cultivating it. But there's absolutely loads of plastic and it's really waterlogged. Ooh, that is ridiculously deep. I nearly, well, I went in up to my knee earlier when I was walking around. And the water's a little bit smelly and it has that film on the top of it, which means it's been there for a long time. And it's in the middle of a slope, so normally it would have just drained down. So I need to figure that out. Got a bit of a ditch in here to send the water out into the path, maybe. But this is not a time for me doing some woe is me type video because I got this allotment after waiting a fairly short amount of time. In the UK, as of October in 2023, there are 175,000 people on waiting lists for allotments. And the longest waiting time was 15 years. So it's pretty incredible that I even have the opportunity to do this. And if you are somebody who's really frustrated by the waiting list and you've been on it for a long time and you really want an allotment, I suggest that you watch this video, which was about the artwork produced by Dr. JC Niala, where she pointed out that if you can get six people from the same local council, you can go to your council and demand they give you an allotment site. Not many people know this, but it's in section 23 of the Allotment Act, so it's a legal requirement for them to actually try to get you one. Guess I wasn't the first person that had trouble with people tipping rubbish here. Well, cleared a little bit, but I'm out of petrol, so I'm going to have to come back tomorrow when I do have some reasonable time to actually make a big dent in this. Because I couldn't walk around the plot, I couldn't even physically measure it. So I used Google Maps to get the area of it, which is about 250 square meters, which is a standard size plot, or about the size of a doubles tennis court. So we'll do a little bit of a tour. You can see that a lot of it is still quite waterlogged. And there's loads of shit on it. It's not... Not that one next door, or the poly tunnel that you can see, but along here. I think that that was where there was once a path, which would be the edge of the plot. But I reckon this person who's been clearing this has been encroaching quite a bit. Otherwise it makes yeah, you see, it's waterlogged at the moment. But it's on a slope and it's Springfield allotments. So there's presumably some springs around, which would mean that there's a fair bit of water and it's been unusually wet recently. So there's no real surprise that it would be pretty wet here. That's usable, but that is ridiculously deep. I nearly, well, I went in up to my knee earlier when I was walking around. Looks like someone's been trying to put a bit of a ditch in here to send the water out into the path, maybe. There's a shed there. What well, looks like a uh, a plum. Not in great shape. Yeah, it looks a bit diseased. Certainly part of it is. And loads of waterlogged, very weedy areas. So it's an absolutely glorious day, early March, and I did do a little bit more last night by just clearing 
a little bit more of this area because I found some, um, I had some petrol in the van, so I just put it into the machine and thought I'd make use of the time. And then Zaman came over, uh, who also has a YouTube channel because he saw that I was filming some stuff and um, he gave me a massive bag of salads of lettuce and some white radish leaves, which I've eaten twice since for lunch today and uh, for dinner last night, which I thought was a good omen as far as finding people, which was finding people who can help me to learn because this is easily my weakest area of gardening. Although I've always grown things to eat, I haven't had like a production facility, if you know what I mean. I haven't dedicated a whole section of garden just for food crops. And that's why I didn't really want to do it in isolation, I think. You can't learn anywhere near as much unless you actually have people around you. So I'm going to carry on today just uh, clearing, clearing things because it's mainly, you can see here, loads of rose bay willow herb which although makes a nice tea um i don't think i can make that much tea and there are tons of brambles and i don't like blackberries enough to only grow those so i'm just clearing that sort of thing and i've cleared a path along here so i can actually walk from one end of my own plot to another uh, and i'm also trying to figure out what the boundaries of the plot are. I think I've got them fairly well sussed now. I, I mean, I don't know, there's some of that shed that's salvageable, but I'm gonna clear the rest of that, take everything out of the shed and see what needs to be thrown away, see if there's any goodies in there. Yeah, just spend some time chilling out, clearing this sort of shit up, which I find pretty relaxing. And I can just hear the birds, which I won't be able to in a minute because I'll be having a noisy tool running. But once I start collecting some rubbish, in fact, I might collect some rubbish first because obviously the more of the rubbish that I hit with the strimmer or the brush cutter, the more it's just going to be chopped up into tiny, tiny little bits. So I might just start out with a little bit of uh, litter picking. I'm going to fill quite a few bags, I think. losing the light now but I've pegged this line out I've just been putting some just been putting wood chip down over it and I've cleared just cleared that bit of all the brambles and all that sort of thing just done loads of litter picking and the litter picking was actually really useful to try and understand a little bit more about the site so I discovered you know, I was looking at what the plane of the land was. So why, you know, where is the water collecting? Where can I send it to? I discovered a rhubarb crown, some areas where there's blackberries, a jump starter for a car, which I imagine is not in working condition. So it's probably just gonna need to be chucked. And um, I think that the shed's probably beyond repair, but it's starting to feel like I come down here and I make progress and that's all I'm looking to do because if I were to actually think about the scale of the task of trying to get this into a workable bit of land that it would probably be a little bit daunting. So instead of doing that, I just come down, I do the bits that I can and I make an improvement and I can see that improvement and that improvement is enough to keep me motivated. So we got to the stage yesterday of getting this path in. It's down here that I just put this little string line up so that I could figure out where it's going to go. Um, and I figured out a few things about the plot. It looks like there's loads of rubbish on it because it's where loads of the other plot holders would just chuck their bags of rubbish. So I got rid of about four bags of rubbish yesterday. There's still quite a bit more to get rid of. I'm going to finish off putting this path in then clear a little bit of the brush that's round that way. And then I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna do a fair bit of planning just to figure out 
what sort of things that I want to have on the plot and how I might be able to go about gradually implementing those because there's there's a lot of work to do as far as I think that I need to dig a ditch on the lower half of the plot because although recently it's been ridiculously wet so this isn't necessarily the time that you would be judging how well drained the plot is I think that there are some obstructions to it draining properly because it's not the lowest down on the hill but it's probably the most waterlogged so there's obviously stuff in the way that is preventing it from draining properly whether that's some of the plastic that's under the, that's stopping it from uh, dissipating into the ground properly there are some mounds that are preventing it from flowing down the hill um, I'm going to try and figure those things out. Naturally, over the next month or so, I imagine it will start to dry up. Hopefully, we won't have quite so much rain. But I'm still excited, even though uh, it seems a little bit daunting. And one of the other plot holders gave me these gooseberries, which I know I probably shouldn't have put them next to the path because they're a nice spiky plant, but I had nowhere else to put them. I didn't prepare the ground properly in, in as far as just dug some holes and put them in. Uh, and there's still loads of stuff that I need to get rid of, like this, this Carex pendula. Uh, I'm probably going to dig that out because that is just a, that is a nuisance plant. There's a fair few raspberry canes here, which it looks like this plot holder, when he was clearing this bit of ground, didn't realize where the edge of the plot was and he's done some of this. So yeah, you can see, I don't know whether you can see how waterlogged some of this is. Yeah. That is, a lot of water in there is being prevented from properly getting down. So what I'm planning to do is to put a ditch running along here. So it'll be about, I don't know, 25, 30 meter long ditch that will go along where the path between the two allotments should be. So I'm gonna just put in a little bit of a ditch just coming out through here. Don't know whether I should do that today. I think I've probably done enough to be honest. Um, and like I said, I'll just keep chipping away at it. It does seem a little bit insurmountable at the moment because just finding so much rubbish, it's just so much plastic uh, that yeah, it just makes me wonder what on earth has been going on. I think people have been tipping here, but there's so much plastic. I thought it was just overgrown. I didn't realize that it was basically, it's almost like a landfill site. See, tons of water. Looks like they had some ridges and furrows here a long time ago. I'm going to pull that pallet out, all those pallets out, because I don't really know what they're doing smack bang in the middle of the plot. Um, I don't have much use for them. There is an enormous amount of where people have laid down plastic and these tarps, and to be honest, it's actually really annoying, because although it does help to keep weeds down it can't be there for very long and then it becomes brittle and then it becomes this mess that just can never really be taken out just look at all all those tiny bits you know, that'll take years of just raking over the soil 
and trying to get it out. And that's the same reason why I absolutely hate landscape fabric. The only use for it is to prevent gravel from getting contaminated with soil. But when people use it to try to keep weeds down, it just doesn't work. It just gets incorporated into the plant roots, gets brittle, tears up, just sheds in the soil so that you have absolutely loads of plastic in the soil. And it's a nightmare to get it out. So if you're thinking about uh, using some plastic, just make sure that you're gonna be taking it out in town before it does that sort of shit. So the next job will be extending this ditch all the way up there. Right now, I've just got through this bit because it's all piled up. If you can't see, that's going down about three feet from the surface uh, just to get to the water table. And then I've just been sending it out onto the path because then it just flows down the hill. That's quite satisfying actually, just seeing it escaping. Because previously I think that all the plastic and all the stuff that just built up there was just slowing down the flow of the water, which is why it's getting held up here, even though, like, okay, there's a little bit of water logging at the bottom corner of this plot, but this is a good meter higher over here. And even though this seems like quite a big task, I'm watching this video. And all I want to do is go straight back down there and carry on with it. And that's part of the reason why this video is quite cobbled together because I'm going away tomorrow and I'm going to run out of time. So I think I need to run down there and dig a ditch, which seems to be just about the most urgent thing in my brain right now. So follow along with me on this journey. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon. By the way, if you do want to follow along with the journey and you're not already subscribed, then it's probably a good idea to be subscribed. I don't normally ask people to subscribe, but I'm just reminding you that it might be a good idea for you to go and click that button just below, uh, because then it'll mean it's easier for you to, to see when the videos come up. So hit the bell icon as well. There's my YouTuber spiel.